Because um, across the globe, especially in Kenya and Africa, we do remember the disappointment of losing out to England in the main cup uh, at Wellington. Yes. And uh, incidentally, four players who played in that game are actually in Nairobi. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a battle royale between these two sides, by the way. And uh, it's a it's a stunt test for Harlequins. Let's see what they're made of. And uh, and they come out there, the England Royals, uh, James Rodwell. Yes, captaining the English side in there. There's Rob Vickerman, made his debut for England in the 2004 Paris Sevens, leading out the England Royals. There's a 25-year-old Marco De Jobi yes. coming to play in Kenya. Yes. Um, his last game, incidentally, for the England national team was against Kenya in yes. Hong Kong, and he broke his leg in the tournament. Yes. We also have Matt Turner, mm. born in Cape Town, jumping up your pitches, Rodwell. Of course, uh, very, very uh, known with his ginger hair. Uh, ginger hair Quite yes. a very explosive and physically dominating player. Yes. Um, does not leave anything to, 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 does not leave any scraps out whatsoever. Yeah. In part, yeah. uh, Harlequins, I'm seeing some um, familiar faces. Isaac Adimo is captaining uh, Harlequins. Wilson Kopondo, um, I'm the Kenya 15th captain, Victoria's Kenya 15th captain from uh, Madagascar, the Car Cup, Elgon Cup back in the back in the country. And I'm also seeing Brian Yikuli, a former Kenya 7th player also. And they will lend some experience to this Harlequins team, by the way. So the ball is kicked to the most capped England forward of all time, James Rodwell, James Rodwell. who picks it up. Pops it out to Matt Turner. Matt Turner spreads it to Mark Odejobi. Uh, he's got a lot of pace to burn. And Matt Turner also is not uh, one who basically does not have gas to burn. Mm, yes. Pulls on through about 15 meters. And it looks like the game must start on a very high pace. On a very fast Temple. pace, yes. Yeah, the England Royals playing with so much pace and width and momentum. And uh, that's Mark Odejobi with the ball again. And the English fellows have actually managed to string. 23 passes, 24, 25, 25 in passes, 39 seconds. And Matt Turner there putting on the afterburners, but Rob Vickerman there. They actually having almost a pass Matt every half, Turner one again. and a half seconds. One and a half seconds, and then at the point as you call it. You know, it's, it's 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 one thing to actually run the ball across, it's another thing to pass it across, and clearly you can tell that the ball travels faster yes. when you pass it. Yes. <laughs> Definitely indeed. But the England Royals uh, starting with, with, with a lot of intent and uh, momentum and a lot of venom in their play, complete, the, the pass completion excellent, and they're smelling the trial in here. Let's see what they can do with this ball. They're basically, what, 5 to 10 meters out of uh, the try line. England Royals um, made up of Andrew Myers, Andrew Boyce, Marcus Weber, Ogai Slovic. England on the attack, Matt Turner, danger man, man to watch out. Former nominee for the International Rugby Board Player of the Year. Seventh, yes. Definitely, uh, uh, I mean, he's, he's definitely been very excited. Oh, and that's, there's it. We have an uh, opening try from uh, the England Royals. That's Andrew Boyce. Andrew Boyce. Andrew Boyce with the opening try for the England Royals. The try was coming. I mean, from the kickoff, the Royals were just excellent. The ball retention, the, the, the passing, and the running into space, brilliant from the Royals. And they lead by five points to nil. They were very patient in the build-up. Mm. Definitely tried to use the width of the pitch quite well. Mm. Actually strung the passes all the way right across from the left to the right. Mm. And definitely having runners cutting across. It's very hard to defend against such a team. The conversion has been missed, so it's England Royals 5 and Kenya Harlequins 0. Try by Andrew Boyce. Andrew Boyce. Kenya Harlequins uh, have actually won the National 7th Circuit and have represented uh, their club at the Safaricom 7th yes. event before. What do you think their chances are this year? Um, uh, let's see. They're in a very good pool by the They should be able to qualify for the... For the hopefully... They, they, they can't qualify for the quarterfinals. Uh, and uh, with Wilson Kopondo there, Brian Nikuli, Isaac Adimo in the, in the team. And uh, here, goes, uh, uh, here goes Isaac Adimo, but his pass is taken out. So it's going to be a line out for the Harlequins. Isaac Adimo, of course, capped uh, for Kenya at the 15 aside level. 15 aside level at fly half for Kenya. Yes, yeah, student at the United States, States International University. Yes. Studying business administration. Mm. Definitely, uh, you know, still very young. Definitely a very key player for the Kenya Harlequins team. Uh, captain them in this year's event. Yeah, captain them in this year's event, by the way. And uh, we'll be looking to galvanize this team to some action. 
the scrum set up for Kenya Harlequins right uh, right within England territory, just uh, a meter short from the 10 meter. Yes. And it's Harlequins, let's see what they can do with the ball, by the way. Oh, <laughs> jumping over his player there. His player. I'm, 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 I'm shocked the referee didn't call for anything. <laughs> Halloquins seem to be building up some phases here, by the way. I'm not too certain whether the approach was actually taking the physical route for the English players is the way forward because they have actually been tried and tested at the international level. And, um, national level, by the way, that's their bread and butter. Yes, they're very physical. Yes. Oh, there was a man out, but the pass couldn't get there long enough. Anthony Mutai knocking off his... Knocking off his losing the ball. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the kind of stuff and that people pay to come and watch out in here. <laughs> English guys didn't like that though. And it has gone and the crowd into, into a frenzy here. Anthony Mutai, Kenya International also at the at 15th level. Uh, loose forward, but whoa, that was a thunderous hit. That is a good old fashioned piece of rugby. That got right. the crowd going. Yes, it did. It's, <laughs> it's, it's what they come in to pay and watch. Uh, in rugby parlance, they call it what? They call it a stool. Yes, uh, in the Kenyan parlance, <laughs> stool. It could be. Um, Arranging of your ducks, perhaps, <laughs> or perhaps uh, you know, drowning the hippo. Yeah, <laughs> there's a breakage on the play just to confirm that the England player is okay. He yes. looks to be struggling, mm. though up on his feet, which is a good sign. Yeah, it's Matt, Matt Turner, Turner trying to rally out his players across. Yeah. Um, definitely, I don't think yeah. they'll take that yeah, standing. Yeah, yeah, he looks a bit winded for me. Looks a bit Factor. winded, but he seems to be okay. He'll be fine. Yes, since the ball was lost uh, in contact, uh, scrum advantage into England. Yes. Yes. Scores are still 5 0 up for England. 5 0 to England, yes. Two minutes left before the afternoon break. Definitely, definitely a very exciting game. Yeah. I think um, game number three, and it's looking like it's on that's offering a lot more action than the first two. Yes. Halle yes. brings the ball now. Let's see what they can do with this ball. They've actually been with the ball for the last two minutes, so they denied the English team possession. Possession, yes. They need to make it count. They need to make it count, by the way. Anthony Muta is now Anthony a targeted Mutai, man. He's targeted uh, man, by the way. He's put himself up onto the radar of the English team. I'd like to see how the English team will be able to, whether the Storm will force or whether the Harlequins might be able to actually gain parity. Good tackle there from uh, the, the Harlequins uh, player, uh, the England Royal player, but uh, I think the uh, player has... Uh, to be there, you have it, Charles Cadovillis, the Kenya Harlequins coach, former international. Yes, former Kenya international. Uh, played in the communal games in Manchester for the Kenyan team, and also in the 2005 Rugby World Cup in Hong Kong. Yes, definitely an established player an in his own right. Established player in his own right. Yes, and the England Royals have uh, taken it out, so it's going to be their still their play, by the way. Uh, it's going to be a lineout, and it's going to be an England ball. We are approaching the end of the first half. A competitive game uh, by some standards, yes, because uh, we are now leading uh, by five to two. And uh, credit to Harlequins, they have uh, managed to put in some very strong defensive work and some tackles. Clearly a marvel to watch England. Yes. How they spread the ball left, right, and center. They can actually switch on the physicality, the speed, the interplay of passes is simply just, you know, miraculous. He needs, I mean, it's, it's almost a miracle of rugby. Yes, and here comes Anthony Mutai again. Anthony Mutai seems to be taking the route one approach and it's working for him. The runners out wide in there. That's Brian Okomi. Okomi takes two players out, gets the ball down. Um, the referee seems to be playing advantage for the Kenya Harlequins team. Anthony Mutai with the ball again, spread on out wide. Mutai with the ball again, looking for a runner. Spreads it on out and it's a matter of speed versus ball now. Good tackle in there by the England Royals team. Yes. They really look like and all the Kenya Harlequins are going to score a try here. And they lose <laughs> five points to five. Find out at the end of the game how important that try was scoring right before the half. Right before the half, by the way. But you know, I, I love the, the, I mean, the persistence of Alekins. They kept going. The ball was being recycled. They never gave up hope, and uh, the gap finally opened. And Alekins just managed to score a try there. Tell me, game on out, five all, mm. with Isaac Odimo left with the conversion. This is what? Um, conversion miss. So it CLS? remains 5-5. Five, five. On the halftime break, Kenya Harlequins 5, England Royals 5. five. And a very interesting game so far. Uh, the Royals uh, started with so much uh, pazance and, uh, and momentum. And they led. But Harlequins have finished the half the stronger side. And it's uh, 5 points to 5 
in this Group D encounter between the England Royals and Kenya Harlequins. Charles Gadoville is there, the Kenya Harlequins coach, being very animated next to him, Sidney Obonyo, also a former Kenya international. They have definitely been you know, through all this and they actually understand exactly what it's all about. I like how the ball is coming back. After I contracted defense, you took it in easy. Okomi took it back in, the ball came back. That's what's key. That's what's key. So contract the defense, it will come back and then let the ball do the work and then it will open up on the end. In defense, gentlemen, don't panic. Hold your line. Tony, do not lead with your hands. I want you to lead with your shoulder. So even if you miss, you're still in line. Don't fall out of, fall out of place. Safa. And then don't let them bounce off your tackles. Make sure you hit down. Don't fight with them up here. Sasa, let's finish it off. We've got a strong bench, eh? Very strong bench. Support, so is about contracting and not rushing out of defense, by the way. I think he's telling the boys, just keep it like that. Take them into contact, contract them. Let them, I mean, let's, let them, use, they should draw the defenders to come to the racks and they will leave some gaps which their team can exploit, by the way. On your uh, clip right now is the KCB team. Looking very happy, Anthony, you got in your picture right there, former Kenya, Fugees International. Yes. Played in the veterans yesterday, testament to himself, he's actually up and running. Yes. <laughs> Everyone had predicted that anyone who played yesterday would be waking up on Mashujadi. <laughs> and the Royals are about to kick off the second half of the third game of the Safari Com 7s. Uh, England Royals versus Kenya Harlequins. The score is five apiece at the Moich National Sports Centre, Kasrani. And Harlequins have held their own, they're looking very good. And here comes uh, Harlequins, by the way. Oh, brilliant break. They seem to gain confidence seem scoring gain right confidence before the that try. Yes. So it looks like that try might be the telling point in this particular game. James Rodwell tracking back on the ball, getting it. Seems to be isolated. Yeah, but his mind has been, been able to stab off uh, the Harlequins defenders so far. You've got to you've got to admire how he basically took it very calmly. Took it very calmly. You wonder way. that he's the most capped uh, England seventh forward of all time oh. at the age of 29. 29, yeah. Making his uh, 11th season mm. in the England national team. Yes. Oh, yeah. he just couldn't get Matt Turner there for some reason or the other. By the way, but Harlequins still that ball on the ground and Isaac Adimo tackled it, tackled there. Wilson Kofondo getting the ball there. Former Kenya Sevens International himself, himself yes. captain of the 15th team, co-captain actually. Uh, the execution there wasn't very good. The execution there wasn't very good, by the way. Kenya Harlequins just making a meal out of it. Um, yeah. Should have actually had a little bit more confidence because yes. they've already been able to show that the English team can actually open up. Oh, England actually managed England to get a clear a way a to... Quickly taken line out. Rob Vickerman there, in the picture. Also an established player for the English service. Rob Vickerman scores the second England try. Rose, with the second try of the England game. England 10, Kenya Harlequins 5. Kenya Harlequins 5, yes. And, um, it's unnecessary right there, throwing the ball in traffic. He could be alert and quick in this, in this game of servants. Vickerman popped the ball out to Rodol and Rodol quickly returned the favor to his national team colleague and the rest is history as we call it. History. Quite appalling, you think? Quite appalling. Uh, I think Halakins were asleep. It's going to be a lot in this seven games because uh, I mean, the referee does allow you to give you the discussion of a quick line out, by the way. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's actually allowed in the game. And, uh, Conversion was good, right? Conversion, Conversion was good, good, by the way. So it's, England uh, rolls 12, Kenya Halakins 5. 5. Yes. And uh, England rolls kick to. Uh, Harlequins, let's see what Harlequins can do. Thunder has tackled there from Rob Vickerman. Balls on out. Balls Harlequins out would like to gain even parity as soon as possible. As soon as possible. And um, oh, it's a knock on the ball. Knock the ball by the way. Both of these players have actually played on through the under 19 category of the Safari 7s yes. tournament over the couple of years. Yeah, they do. They do. It was advantage, uh, it was called back or something by the referee. Both teams seem to be evenly matched out, uh, not making so many errors, but the errors are actually making, actually counting. They seem to actually both have good ball control. Brian Nikuli, the ball in there, just got on him. 
Mundo is playing at scrum half. Eva, Eva Montron, he seems to be retrieving most of the ball from the rucks. I would suspect that the, <laughs> the sweeper was actually on holiday. On holiday. <laughs> They've actually managed to gain in some territorial some advantage in there. Advantages. Nick Baraz on your picture there. Hero in uh, the Kenya, Kenya, Kenya final against Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, yes. yes. Uh, and uh, England is still leading by 12 points to 5, but this game is on, on, on a knife edge. I think whoever scores the next try... Uh, okay, the game is on a knife edge, uh, but let us put it that way. It's, it's swinging from side to side, by the way. Both sides are evenly matched. But the Royals leading by 12 points to 5 against uh, Kenya Harlequins. The one thing we've seen in this game is any time a team crosses over the halfway line of the opponents, they actually score. So advantage Harlequins, line out was not straight. Was straight. Um, they have to make this count. Yeah, they have to make this count, by the way. Very interesting game. Uh, the, England, the England Royals team look to be tiring out. Yeah. Perhaps a testament to the high altitude the that they have. in Nairobi, yes. Yeah. And maybe the pace of the game also is taking it's, it's been very fast. The very first 34 fast. minutes was frenetic. They stringed about 34 passes before they scored the first tries yes. in the first 42 seconds. Pass for two seconds. So it was close yeah. to a pass every second. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and let's see what Harlequins can do with this ball now. Isaac Ademo. Uh, the passing just there wasn't went astray. But still, a, it's still Harlequins ball, but the passes are not finding, they're not sticking. The passes are not sticking, by the way. And. Uh, Wilson Copondo Wilson really Copondo. struggling oh, through in there. Gaining, gaining ground, by the way. I think uh, some illegality, illegality then perhaps from, a card. From James Rodwell there, by the way. He should have rolled away. Yes. That would actually have been considered a professional foul, but the referee lets foul. that one go. Advantage Kenley Harlequins. They're about 20 meters away from the trial line area. We've got a couple of runners out in there. Credit to the England Royals team. They, they're defending quite respectfully. A bad, bad pass from the Harlequins team there by the going forward. They were in a very strong position to squad try, but uh, the pass went forward. And uh, that was it, by the way. And the momentum was killed there. I think um, <laughs> they were looking for a switch, but maybe the adrenaline, you know, adrenaline has a way of making you drunk yeah, <laughs> from time to time. You're looking ahead to what you're going to do, but you, you, you can't execute whatever you have right now. Yes. And that is what has cost Harlequins of us, uh, of a genuine second try there. That try was coming. And I can see Brian Nikuli there fronting up on the, uh, for this scrum. Ball is out in the out over 90 meters to the territory, by the way. Matt Turner will do Matt the next Turner. logical thing, kicks it down. Kicks it down, moves Field. all the way next to the halfway line, but not out yet. Not out yet. Kenny Harlequins have the ball. Interesting game. The England team don't look like they really want to go in for the contact faces. They all left the racket and they're quick up to defend once the ball carrier moved on to Although they're all in the center, and it looks like that might be a clear way to the line. Just didn't have the requisite pace. But good defending there from the English team. I think the referee will call something in there because the ball looked like it was knocked out. Playing advantage for Kenya Harlequins. Isolated out by Matt Turner. The referee will have to call it back. Kenya Harlequins still with the ball. Nice tackle nice, there. Nice tackle. Nice cover tackle by, by the England Royals, by the way. Advantage still being played, so the referee goes back to the uh, advantage being played. Um, it looks like he's in some level of distress. Some, some pain there. Uh, the referee still plays on the game. The buzzer's actually gone, so this is the last play of the, the game. Last play of the Kenya game, Kenya have to score. And Brandy Cooley. Brandy Cooley. Brandy Cooley scores right under the post. Right under the post, by the way. Kenya Harlequins 10. Uh, England Royals 12. Whoa. Brilliant play there from Brian Yukuli, using his tall, strong, big frame to get over the line. And uh, of course, Brian Yukuli knows his players very well. Yes. Long-standing play, the national sevens team himself. Yes. Very unlucky to have missed out the last season through injury, mm. but definitely showing that he definitely knows what is required to be done. Yes. And with the conversion, Kenya Harlequins draw even. And the ends in a draw. The this is the, draw, the first draw of the tournament. First draw of the tournament. Very competitive game. Both sides threw everything into it. And Lila, uh, Lila Siligua with the conversion there. And Harlequins uh, putting on some cheer for the Kenyan fans here at the Mo International Sports Centre with a gutsy, competitive, never said die spirit. Drawing 12 12 with the highly fancied uh, England Royals. So Kenya Harlequins finished the second half like they did. The first half with a try and a conversion. Try and a conversion. Sorry, yes. they didn't convert in the first half, mm -hmm. but with a try right at the end. Um, the coaching staff there, Charles Cadolville, is looking mm -hmm. 
animated. animated. The team is very happy. Oh. I think Charles Cadovillis understands that there was perhaps a chance to win the game. But all left to play. Other teams uh, in the pool include the boys from Kenya and Grenoble. And I'm certain Kenya Harlequins will be looking at uh, finishing at the top. Yeah, top of this pool, yeah. They've actually managed to hold on the England Royals, who are one of the informed teams, one of the favorites of the competition. And uh, it's a good start for Harlequins. And draws not a bad result if you're doing with a very strong side. And they'll be looking to win their two games with bigger margins and maybe qualify for the quarterfinals. Definitely need. Next game coming up, still from Pool D, Grenoble versus Homeboys. Homeboys uh, played very well in the National Seven Circuit in Kenya, Grenoble, making their sixth appearance back into Kenya. Very, very competitive. I do recall in 2010, mm. when Samoa won the tournament, Grenoble in the same pool with Samoa, and they defeated Samoa in the pool event. Oh yeah, yes, yes. Not a side to be underrated, by the way. And there'll be a very formidable outfit coming to this uh, Safari Sevens tournament. Homeboys also impressed at the National Sevens circuit with a crop of very exciting young players. Uh, the likes of Brian, of, uh, Brian Chisanga, uh, Oscar Yodi also. And here they come out. Grenoble was a 